Zace with the Rock Revolt Magazine. I am here with uh, Michael Barnes of Brad. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. How about yourself? Doing all right, man. Doing all right. You guys have the night off right now, don't you? Uh, yeah, we're actually in Boise, Idaho right now. And day off. We're heading to Spokane and heading back to Boise. <laughs> right on to just... So just scheduling conflict there? Or did you figure you'd you know get a double dose of Boise on your way through? <laughs> <laughs> double dose of Boise. We love Boise. Right on. Uh, uh, they're actually both uh, radio shows, so just uh, how it turned out. <laughs> right on. Sometimes it doesn't always line up, but hey, I mean, once you get over yeah. there to Spokane, you know, you can turn around and head back, uh, head back towards the east. Yeah, that's just what we're doing. So right on, right on. You guys are actually uh, out on tour right now with. Uh, Lacey Sturham, uh, the guys in Messer, and Righteous Vendetta. How's that going? It's going great, man. I mean, all, almost all the shows have been um, sold out or very close. Um, all, everybody's getting along really well and just enjoying it. And we're having good, finally having some good weather, and so uh, we're excited. We're happy. All right, all right. You guys are obviously uh, supporting your latest album, Gone, that was released back in October of 2017. Yes. Yeah. How's that been? Yeah. Received pretty well, man. Have you guys uh, been pretty happy with the results so far? Or? Oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. I think I think we're seeing a result of um, ticket sales too. It's like people are coming out to a lot of the shows. We're doing a lot of the shows. We're doing um, all ages, so we're seeing a younger crowd, right? Too coming out. We're seeing, yeah, we're seeing a lot more people that are uh, that like some of the stuff that we've been uh, putting out off this new record. We got a little bit more in the electronic kind of field, and so we're seeing some younger kids, which is pretty cool. So we've been doing for this like for like twelve years now, over a decade. Right. So we're trying to build, you know, we're trying to build a new fan base as well as like holding on to our old one as well. So, <laughs> right. I mean, it's kind of like you know, you, you know, as the older ones get older, we're not getting any younger, man. You got to reach new people, man. You got to, you know, it's the only way to yeah. build, right? Yeah, that's that's kind of our goal. Is like uh, we want to we want to uh, retain still kind of our sound, our red sound throughout the years. I think we've always changed a little bit. We've always uh, kind of kept the same sound, but have always pushed ourselves. Uh, musically to try new things and you know our tastes have changed as well um, you know a lot, a lot of electronic stuff is kind of new right um, there's a lot more plugins and things like that and <clears> even like our we don't even have amps on stage anymore like everybody even like Breaking Benjamin either but lot, not either but uh, a lot of other bands are using these either fractals or um, Kempers and we're using Kempers on stage which is just all digital but it sounds amazing because <laughs> you can you can literally pull up exactly. I mean, that's what we're doing in the studio too. That's how we record. A lot of bands are doing that now. <clears throat> they just use digital effects. Right. You A B it, and you can't even tell the difference huh. between cabs and the digital. Um, yeah, the I mean, technology just advanced so much more. Right on it. I mean, so I'm gonna be. Great for, oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's great for travel. It's great for because uh, you can fly overseas. Right. You can use the exact same sound that you use on the record you can use live. <laughs> right. And it's not the big bulky equipment, right? Yeah, yeah. So you can fly with it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Makes so traveling light. <laughs> you go overseas. Yeah. Yeah. You go overseas or you have a fly, a fly date in the uh, United States. You'll have the exact same show um, when it comes to tones and sounds. Right. You have the exact same tones and sounds for our bass player and our guitar player. Wherever we go, right on. But you poor drummer, you know. If, you, if if you're you know you're in a drum, you know you've got a drummer and you got a band, he's still got to lug all that stuff around though. So there's <laughs> yeah, the drummer, the drummer, the drummer's screwed. <laughs> yeah, we still haven't figured out a way around that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it does have to be nice, man. Absolutely. So you said you know this album's got more of an electronic feel to it, um, and you said you know it has to do with you know trying to capture a new fan base. Um, Different. Yeah, I mean, it's catching new fans, but it's also stuff that we like, you know. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, what, what, in, like a lot of the electronic sound. Right, what influenced you to kind of uh, maybe tinker with that a little bit and try to maybe get into that a little bit more than you have on past records? Um, I mean, like I said, there's just so many new plugins right. that are out there now, and I really do like some of that stuff. I really like a lot of the electronic kind of sound right. sounding bands that are coming out, too. Um, so we just used some of that influence um, to add to some of the, the harder uh, rock guitars and to kind of keep some of our sound as well. With I think it's just adding another layer. You know, we in the past we've had strings, and so on this record we do have strings uh, on a lot of the different songs. But then we've 
on some of it, we've replaced the strings using the electronic component um, just to add more of that layer. So I feel like we've always had like kind of a landscape of sounds throughout the whole record, and right. so that's what we've kind of done. It's just replaced some of the some of the string portions with some of the electronic kind of sounds, and it's just very atmospheric. Um, we've always kind of done that. Um, right. We've always had um, tracks that have had kind of the atmosphere sound. But um, we've used a little bit more of like the um, kind of those saws um, for like EDM kind of style. But it's not like a full song of EDM. It's just like well, maybe we'll put a little portion of like here's some saws, and they'll just add a little extra. You know, it's like a, a bridge or something that hits pretty hard, and you just add a saw to the guitar, and it just sounds massive. Right on, right on. Have you thought about maybe doing that a little bit with the drums? Like, I don't know if you've uh, seen or heard any of the uh, Evanescence that their new album, Synthesis. And for the drums, they actually brought in an electronic kit and kind of added a whole new electronica feel to their drum kit on their songs. Yeah, that's what we do. I mean, we've actually had all, we've added a new uh, trigger pit. Okay. um, Where Anthony's got like all these trigger tables. And he's got a bunch of trigger pads and stuff. And then our drummer has a trigger pad, too. Okay. So, yeah, we've, we've incorporated that into our show. We're like, Anthony's, I mean, we're, we want to make as much of it live as we possibly can. Sure. And so, we, yeah, that's what we've been trying to do. You know, we don't have, like, we wish you could, like, afford string players. Bring string players. I mean, it's so expensive <laughs> to bring out those things. Right, so, right. We do as much as, we're trying to do as much as we can with the four people that are in the group right now. Sure. Sure, you're trying to make it more of, you know, like I said, what you're hearing on the album is what you're going to get live yeah. in person. Yeah, that, yeah, that's that's what we're trying to incorporate. And we will, and I think, I feel like that's what we want to do in the future, too, is just keep incorporating more and more live um, aspects to it. So right. Like, you see, you'll see, like, a lot of bands, like, Greg and Benjamin, we saw, did that. Like, uh, um, uh, Jason Rao used to be in our band. He's one of the guitar players. He was, uh, he changed the effects. He just technology is amazing nowadays. So he has like a pedal or something where he could change his guitar into a, it sounds like strings. Okay. So he could play his guitar and it'll sound like he's, like there's a violin playing or something. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, nice. it's ridiculous. Yeah. And I mean, that does, that just brings a different aspect, it brings, brings a different direction to the music and it does let you play around a little bit. And like you said, it, it's a lot easier with a lot less gear. Oh yeah, I mean you look at Rush, like right. doesn't the guitar or the the bass player plays like p- piano with his feet. Sure, <laughs> sure, yeah. yeah. Sure. Or I mean, <laughs> even go with like Tom Morello on the guitar, man. That guy can make his guitar do some of the craziest stuff you've ever heard. Yeah, yeah. You look at Matt Bellamy from Muse and his crazy guitars that he does with the shapes the sound with his hand or something from got like some weird pad thing on the guitar. Right. Where do you, do you think that all just is born out of boredom? You know, traveling uh, from city to city during tour. Like, let's see the weirdest stuff we can do with our instruments, and then it's like, wait a minute, that's actually really cool. How do we reproduce yeah, I mean, this? When, yeah, when you can when you can sh- shape the sound, when, it, when you when you give the artist more tools to create art, then yeah, I mean that's that's what we love to do. So I mean that's it's great for the artist. Right. Do you, do you feel like more of that is born out of, you know, traveling from city to city, just something to keep you to help pass the time as you're driving all those miles? Yeah, I mean, a lot of it's just going to shows and seeing other people, um, seeing other people and then like being in the studio and just seeing the different plugins and just, I mean, a lot of it, yeah, it's just us trying to be more creative and think outside the box. All right. Yeah, and so, I mean, so obviously, I mean, you've brought it up several times, you know, seeing other artists, seeing other artists. So you're obviously, you guys are, you know, draw influence from all the different people you see out on the road, the people you're touring with. So you guys are always just like, it's, instead of it's not even really like touring and doing stuff, you guys are kind of, it's a learning experience, it seems like, because you said it just yeah, sounds yeah. like you're, you're a sponge and you guys are just soaking in all the different ideas of all the bands you guys yeah. see play. I mean, that's what I do as a as a lead singer. Um, you know, I'm watching the lead singer. Right. How they interact with the other, how they interact with the audience, how they how they move on stage. You know, it's a lot of the a lot of it is just kind of taking bits and pieces and just melding it into what you know and how you do things. And so it's just yeah, it's it's all the learning experience for us. So. 
Right. Is there anybody that you've seen that's really just kind of influenced the way you perform on stage? Who would you say is probably you've, uh, you know, captured some of their style of that's really helped you out when it comes to your performance? Oh, I mean, when we first started touring, I was like, you know, LeJean from Seven Dust. Yeah. Uh, you know, Jacoby from Papa Roach. Like some of the, some of the, uh, front men that are just very influential as far as like how they interact and the energy that they put on stage and just, you just take bits and pieces of it, you know, like, like, uh, Ben from Breaking Benjamin and how he talks to the crowd and it's just real, you know, he's nonchalant. He's like, just, he's who he is. And right. So it's taking a piece of like that idea of like just being who you are and not trying to portray or put on like a facade or anything. But right. And people love that. They love that kind of stuff. If you're just real to them. Right. Yeah. It's just like, like, it's like you're just one of the people out there. You're just up there doing your thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, it's like, it's the, you know, the crowd, the fans can respect that, you know? There's no, you know, macho machismo, look at me, I'm the guy on stage, you know? it's It goes a long way with yeah. your fans, absolutely. Totally. And that's how we feel as a band. It's like we're here, we love what we do, but we're here ultimately because the fans are coming out to shows. Right. And so it's like we try, we get on ourselves so hard. It's like if we don't have a perfect show, like we're so hard on ourselves because <laughs> we want we want to do the best we possibly can. Right on. We want to put on the best show. So. Yeah, hey man, everybody has a down night, man. You can't beat yourself up. I know <laughs> we are. We do though. Right. Yeah, just, we want, we want, we're kind of perfectionist in a way. We're right. Do, do any of the bands you're touring with right now know you're a little hard on yourselves? Do they ever mess with you? If you, you know, they ever like, guys, what were you doing there? You're a little off key. Do they ever try to poke or prod and just to joke around with you guys? <laughs> Oh, of course. <laughs> <We all do. laughs> right on, man. You got to have that fun, you know. You got to have a little bit of fun out there on the road just to break the monotony, right? Oh yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, uh, a lot of, like you know the typical last day is like the tour prank kind of day. Yeah. Where, you know, we get into some pretty big tour pranks with some of the bands that we fiddle. You know, one of my favorite ones is when we uh, were on the road with Seether, and uh, they usually like wrap Christmas lights. Around everything, mm. so Fast Randy <laughs> came out. Yeah, Randy came out on stage, and you have like Christmas lights around the microphone stand, right? And so Randy, our bass player, came out on stage when they did, he typically he does a, a song "Broken," right? But before he does that, he goes back to his, get like a sip of water or something like that, and Randy runs out on stage, completely dressed in black with a black hat on and everything, completely wrapped in. Uh, Christmas lights. And he goes over them. They replace the microphone stand for Randy, and Randy's holding the microphone. <laughs> and Sean comes out and is like, "What?" <laughs> so as he's trying to sing "Broken," he's like moving the microphone away. <laughs> 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 Pretty funny. You can see it on YouTube. Uh, yeah, right on. I have to check that out. I have to check. I love the guy. See, there it's one of my one of my favorites. Man, love those dudes. Yeah. Great yeah, band, great music. You guys actually had a really good 2017, man. You guys uh, toured quite a bit with some uh, big bands. And, you know, do you think 2017 was a really good year for you guys? It kind of, I mean, you guys, like I said, you've been doing this for so long. But do you think 2017 was kind of a important year for you? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, we're uh, the last record we did was uh, called Up Beauty and Rage. It was a very, like, artistic kind of record and a lot of our fans really love that record but uh we've really been trying to push for uh uh you know a new generation that's what i told you about with the electronics and sure. stuff like that and new generation we're pushing for radio we're trying to get back out there with uh um, bigger bands too with like frank and benjamin and Cedar and all them right and uh so yeah it's definitely a big big opportunity for us we went on a tour with uh, uh Frank and benjamin early on in 2017 and uh one of the questions i asked the crowd was um, how many? Was this the first time they've ever heard of Red? And like ninety percent of the audience raised their hands. Right. So you know, a lot of it is like it's kind of a rebuilding phase for us. Um, we toured with Breaking Benjamin and Three Days Grace back in the day when they were doing those big arena tours in two thousand seven, and we definitely uh, um, gained a lot of um, audience back then. Right. When our first record came out. Now we're in our sixth record, so um, I think it's. Any band that makes it this far where they're like on their sixth record and they've done a decade already, you have to have the mentality of, you know, looking towards the future and how you're going to build your audience. Cause you can't just 
go out and headline shows, headline shows, and eventually those that audience will go away. You have to be willing to open for other bands and, and uh, rebuild that fan base. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, I mean, there's, yeah. there's nothing wrong with opening for other bands because those other bands are going to draw in a fan base that may not, like you said, that 90% of the people at one show hadn't even heard of you guys. It's going to get you in front of more faces. There's nothing wrong with mixing it up and touring with other people. Not at all. No, yeah, and, and a lot of it is, it's, you know, we have become a, a, a fairly, like, decent-sized band. We sell a lot of records. And so I think a lot of it's just budget-wise. We're just trying to figure out, like, we had become, a, like, a big enough where we could headline, but we were too big where we couldn't open because we some of the bigger bands didn't want to pay for what we needed. Right. So it's just finding ways. You know, all bands that go through this, I think, they have to figure out what can you do to make the budget good enough where you can open for a band like Breaking Benjamin where you get what you, where, where they can pay you a certain amount and you can fit it in your budget so that you can still reach out to those new fans. It's still, cause a lot of it is, is kind of a building process. And so I mean, you got to be smart with, I mean, it's business. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. It's not the it's it's not the eighties and nineties, man, where record labels are running yeah. around throwing money at people hand over fist to get them to do whatever yeah. they could. You know, it's it's a whole new day and yeah. age, man. Yeah, I mean that's how bands like us survive. It's like we just have to be smart, <clears throat> with uh, and strategic. And so it's a lot of it is like the people that we have surrounding us, our business managers, our managers, people that are smart and really wanna uh, do something for the band. So it's, yeah, it's all it's all career building kind of moves, right? <laughs> right. And like I said, it's strategy. Yeah. It's a it's a game of chess, man. It's it's a game of chess. You know, doing the best. You're really you know looking out for what's best for you guys in the band that can maximize what's going to be good for your fan base as well. It's all a giant game you guys are playing, man. Oh, yeah. And it, it, it's got to be very it's difficult. <laughs> it's not. You know, it's very difficult. And. We were privileged enough to kind of duck out of the radar before 2008 hit, and people started stop buying records, and everything's kind of switching over to streaming now. Right. And so it's a different world for sure. But you know, we're very thankful that we uh, had made it this far, and, and still support our families and and uh, have this as a career. Absolutely. Well, man, before we let you go, let you uh, enjoy your night off. Uh, traveling up to Spokane. Is there anything you want to tell the fans? Tell them how to get the new album, all that good stuff. Uh, reach out to them, man. It's, this is your time. Let them know. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, uh, you can check us out on redmusiconline.com. Um, from there, you can connect to all of our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and all that. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we're going to be uh, we're gonna be out um, all the way through April. Then we're doing much summer festivals, and we're going to be going out probably again in the fall, <clears throat> and uh, doing a summer probably a couple weeks summer thing too. So, but um, yeah, uh, to pick up the record, you can uh, pretty much anywhere, any streaming site, you can pick it up: Amazon Music, um, uh, Spotify, Pandora, all those different streaming sites. YouTube, of course, uh, one of the bigger ones. And then uh, <clears throat> to buy it, of course, there's iTunes. Um, not there's not like many places like you can't just go to Walmart. Some Walmarts carry it, but mostly everything's streaming or uh, go to Amazon and they'll ship it to you. <laughs> right on. Right on, man. Well, hey, man, enjoy your night. Um, be safe out there traveling. Enjoy this tour. Uh, good luck, man, and hopefully uh, we get you through Kansas City sometime, man, so we can get you check you out live. Definitely. That'd be awesome. All right, bud. We have a good night, man, and uh, we definitely appreciate your time. Of course. Definitely. Uh, all right, sir. Thank you very much. Have a good night. You too. Take care. Uh-huh, bye-bye.